In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Good morning, uh, brethren. Uh, the topic before us this morning is prayer that breaks satanic embargo. Prayer that breaks satanic embargo. Let's open our uh, Bible to Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 26. I read, and he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hand upon him, he asked him if he saw it. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. People of God, we are very much aware that after the creation of man, Satan has been a trouble to the whole world, especially since the fall of Lucifer in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. He has started to trouble mankind in various aspects of their life. It has no respect to social class. The trouble of Satan has no regard to any creed or color. The only people that are saved in his hand are those that are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. A lot of people were languished under the cruel embargo and have not been able to get to move to the higher stage of their life. A situation like that happened to the man in Bethsaida. He was unavoidably stuck under satanic lockdown of blindness. But one day, he was so fortunate to meet Christ Jesus, the deliverer. And he received his healing. Today, if we can all open our eyes to reflect our life and make necessary restitutions and and uh, an amendment in case there is anything going wrong. This is the time for sober reflection. There is no more time to waste. Satan is becoming more cruel. He's becoming more turbulent. His work is becoming more tedious. But Jesus Christ is here today. As he delivered the man, the blind man, a besider, he will deliver the oppressed today in Jesus' name. Whatever is your trouble, whatever is your problem, Christ Jesus is here today. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. 
There is another case study of the man at beside the pool who has been suffering for 38 years in John chapter 5. I just read a few verses of John. John chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now they are read at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool called, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five patches. In this lay a great multitude of important folks of blind. And with that, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whoso then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made all of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity of 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made old? The important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of solution to all the long standing problems. This man was not able to move out of the entanglement and the lockdown. He was paralytic. He was suffering for 38 years. And Christ Jesus met him and he received his healing. Irrespective of the duration of your trouble, irrespective of how long you have been wallowing in troubles and poverty or any catastrophic incidents of life or trials or afflictions, Christ Jesus has the power to deliver. You just need to be more prayerful because prayer is the master key. If you are weak when you are in trouble, your power is small. You need to get up today and rekindle the fire of prayer without wavering, without doubt without any excuse. But this man said he has nobody to move him. He has nobody to support him to the pool. And before he got there, people got there before him. But Christ Jesus is here for all of us. No discriminations. He has no respect for anybody. He only listens to those that surrender to his will. If you are sure you are genuinely born again, and now is the time for you to now rekindle the fire of prayer. Because this man, the paralytic abesider, he raised up his faith. Christ Jesus asked him, and he agreed to it. So inside your mind, you need to agree with Jesus. You need to get rid of all distractions. You need to break every barrier between you and your Lord. You need to make your relationship with him cordial. 
then you can find his favor as the, as the paralytic man find the favor. 38 years of infirmity here. Whatever the, the durations of the problem, Jesus Christ is here today. He will do the healings and deliverance in every life in Jesus' name. The wicked agenda of Satan, don't forget, is to test a trap, to humiliate the advancement of the saint. He put the problem there so that you can get fed up. He wants you to give up your faith. He was trying to put obstacles and yokes on your way to promised land. Sometimes he uses the spirit of backslider. Sometimes he, he comes in forms of backsliding. Sometimes he comes in form of stubbornness. At times he comes in, times of, in form of sins and sicknesses. It could be poverty, it could be failure in careers, it could be setback, it could be unemployment or underemployment, it could be marital issues, it could be barrenness. Sometimes it's the cause of untimely death in the family. Whatever it is, the power in the blood of Christ Jesus will break every yoke today in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. By the anointing, every yoke shall be broken this morning in Jesus' name. <coughs> we are going to consider this topic under three headings. The first headings will be necessity of repentance. and redemption for breaking satanic embargo. The second topic is tragic downfall of stubbornness and overconfident believers. The last topic is Rocket prayer and power for service in United Church. Rocket prayer and power for service in United Church. Let's discuss briefly the force of adding necessity of repentance and redemption for breaking satanic embargo. Can we be insane? and be asking for the grace of God to be multiplied? The Bible said no. We have got to clean our slate. We got to make our relationship better because there was a cause from the beginning of the creation. There was a fall in the garden of Eden. Our forefather, Adams and Eve, they ate of the fruit tree of the knowledge of good and evil with God that for forbidding. They trespassed. They overstepped their boundary. They seemed to be, fight, to be wiser than their God. And the fadit of death was announced against them. God drove them away from the garden and played the cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden with a flaming sword which turned everywhere to guide the way to the tree of life. That is the consequence of sin. Whatever the level of your relationship with God, whatever is the level of your relationship with the almighty God, any element of sin will separate you from God. Let's read a little bit from the book of Genesis for clarity purpose. The 
Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was I read from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field. With the Lord God that made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, and God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and I was pleasant to the eyes. And the tree was desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. That is the way sin appeared to mankind. Those that are drinking. The alcohol will look very lovely. Those that are struggling in, uh, with the sins of uh, with, with one sin or the other, it will look, Satan will coat the sin with honey. Inside this bitterness, but outside the sin will appear attractive. Satan has bombarded the life of Adam and Eve with a lot of information to confuse them. And up to now, he's still confusing the human being. And that was why Paul was emphasizing to Timothy to be watchful and be a practical, play a practical Christianity to be a good role model, not to give devil a chance because he knows what he was facing. He was even at the point of face, facing the matter dog to be killed. He was in prison. When, if he were one or two of the, the end time believers that were in that situation, they wouldn't be able to continue the work of God. What are you passing through that will make you to forsake God? Why will you forsake God? Who else can you serve? You have been in the, in the kingdom. You have done a lot of things to promote the work of God. Where will you go now? And this was what happened. Adam and Eve forgot the comfort they were enjoying. They listened to the foreigner. They listened to the voice of the stranger. And they got confused and fell flat. I pray that today we will not listen to the voice of the stranger. We will not fall down. We will not miss our eternity with God in Jesus' name. Verse, 15, uh, verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou hast caused above all cattle. God brought a cause upon, me, upon the serpent, upon Satan. And above every beast of the feed upon thy belly side thou go, and thus I thou eat all the days of your life. I put enmity between thee and woman, and between thy seed and thy seed. Is I bruise thy head, and thus I bruise his ear. 
there is always a cause attached to any sin committed. I pray that whatever cause we brought upon our life, or whatever cause in the life of any sinners around us, the blood of Christ Jesus will wash them away in Jesus' name. God gave a person to Adam as well. He gave a person to the woman, verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And it's a rule over thee. This is the beginning of the struggle for a woman. They have lost their independence. They are now attached to the apron of man since the beginning of Christians after the fall. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearken unto the voice of thy wife, and as eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat of it, cause is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life. You can see that there are a lot of things that happen following the fall. Both Adam and Eve, they lost their accommodation in the Garden of Eden. They lost their independence and they were dragged out. And God made a safety and security device by putting the cherubim at the east of the garden and the flaming sword to guide the place in case they make any attempt to come back. That's why once a sinner is dragged out of the kingdom, unless he repent of his sin, he is no more a member of commonwealth of Israel anymore. He loses that status of sonship. He becomes the enemies of God and will be wallowing in different types of challenges. God has made a provision for repentance. In the book of John chapter three, verses three to seven, there is always a way where there is no way before God. God has a lot of way. When human beings seem think there is no more way, God has made the provision through the death and resurrection of Christ at Calvary. Whatever that hinder you, the fulfillment of your destiny. John 3, verse 3 to 7, Jesus said, I read from verse 3, John chapter 3 from verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Confess and repent whatever sin in your life so that you can come out of all the trouble and make necessary restitution. As in the book of Genesis chapter 21 to 18, you can see that you have got a, a lot of responsibility before you can go back to the Lord, you got to confess and forsake all the sins that make you to become enemies of God. I read Genesis 20 verse three, but God came to Abimelech in dream by night and said to him, behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's wife. But well, Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? People of God, because of the time I just summarized, 
that whatever sin in your hand, whatever you have done wrong, whatever you have taken wrongly, if you are step on anybody's toe, make amendment. If you are not at peace with man, you can't be at peace with God. And today, the Lord will open the door for you. You'll be reconciled back to God, and satanic embargoes in your life will be broken in Jesus' name. Tragic downfall of stubbornness and overconfident believers. Tragic downfall of stubbornness and overconfident believers. First and foremost, Let there be no wrong impression. Our God has, is, a, is, a, is a merciful God. And Christ Jesus has finished everything for us at Calvary. There is no way for the powers of Satan to overcome the child of God. Once you make the necessary amendment, <coughs> today the law will open the door for you. We need to learn from those that are falling like Pharaoh. A very carnal-minded man, a dictator, very stubborn man, very obsessed with building cities and monuments. The Godlet of human suffering he caused on mankind. God commanded Moses and Aaron to take Israel, Israelites out of the out of the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not let them go. Whosoever is Pharaoh that hinders your fulfillment of your destiny. The law will break their jaw. The law will break their backbone today. All the Pharaoh that are chasing you around, you went, you go to the north, you go to the south, east, and west, wherever you go, you meet various challenges. You meet different problems or the other. One problem or the other, you meet because you have got Pharaoh that is chasing you. But today, as you saw a penitent, repentant soul, as you come back fully to Christ in repentance, as you cleanse your heart, you make your heart holy without any filthiness in your heart. As you soften, soften your heart, and bend down your knee before God, all the pharaohs will clear, will clear up before you. You will receive your liberty today in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 3, verse 19. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Because of stubbornness and rebellion, Egypt were attacked with 10 plagues. The first one at River Nile, the water turned to blood. 
My God will demonstrate his power over your enemy. He will fight for you and he will send all the plagues of Egypt upon all those barriers that are attacking us in this region. This region will have a breakthrough for revival. There is plague of lies and flies. Exodus chapter 8, verse 15 to 24. Various magicians fail because they also did their own, they performed their own mag magic work. But he failed and they declare categorically that this is the finger of the Almighty God. The Lord infected the land of Egypt with contagious disease. Israel was immune. Despite high level of morbidity, especially associated with this pandemic, brothers, sisters, are we not going to thank the Lord that God is protecting us? keeping us healthy, free of charge. Christ Jesus has finished it, has paid it, has paid the price at Calvary for all by his blood. Pharaoh continued to be stubborn. He won't listen, and the Lord sent a painful boil. He scattered the dust into the land of Egypt. Exodus 8, 12 to 15. This was followed by thundering and hailstorm in Exodus chapter 9, verses 27 to 28. After this, Egypt was blessed with locusts, which ate whatever led for the Egyptians' cross. All the Egyptian cross were eaten by locusts because of the hardness of the enemy. For you to know how difficult the enemy is, it's only you that is at times tired and unable to pray. Your enemy never get tired until the firstborn of Egypt were destroyed. It was then that Pharaoh allowed the Israelite to go and serve the Lord, a journey of three days in the wilderness. Today you are, you are set free. You are delivered from all forms of lockdown and embargoes of Satan in Jesus' name. Another case study quickly is Peter. We need to be careful. We need to, we need to watch out for overconfidence. In Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 62, Peter love, he was a love apostle, intensely human as we are, but very impulsive and impetuous, very vulnerable to make mistakes, and most of and at times he speaks unwisely. And instead of the Savior's warning, his fall was gradual and backsliding was and his backsliding was inevitable. He came in stages due to lack of watchfulness. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 62. I'm not going to be able to read because I want to touch as much as possible before we round up. Believers should beware of self-reliance. We need to apply wisdom and strength to avoid failure. Peter could be rational at times and Kana. He had a light on disciplined child as well. When he struck off, Marcus ear, 
when Jesus was about to be crucified, he was taking vengeance. He cut off the ear of the servants of the chief priest, Marcos, for Christ Jesus, the miraculous father, the God of heaven and earth, the savior, the healer. He didn't take vengeance despite the trouble. He healed the man. In the book of Luke chapter 22, verses 50 to 51. I go to another case study quickly. And that is about King Saul, a Benjamite, who also made a silly mistake. He disobeyed God. He failed to completely destroy the Amalekites and all their possessions. He spared their king contrary to God's will. What are you keeping in your room? You have been given by the, your, your prophet in the past a lot of things to use. You have not used it for a long time because you find yourself in this congregation. But your mind is still going there. You are keeping idols in your house. Get rid of them. The Lord is speaking to you. Get rid of them. Go and give it to your pastor to destroy it. You will never come out of the tunnel until you totally separate yourself from the Egypt. So his mind was still in the world. The first king in history, God loved him, but he didn't love God. Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offering and sacrifice as much as in obeying the Lord? Rebellion is like the sin of divination as with reference to that lady with the spirit of divination in the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 24. She was a very good woman. trying to walk with the apostle, mix herself among them, knowing, not knowing that she was a mixed multitude, but God find her out. Wherever you are, the Lord and the heaven will find you out. Nobody will contaminate this church. We are delivered by the power and the blood of Christ Jesus. David, he killed Goliath, and this resulted to envy and jealous in the heart of Saul. As women, you know the woman, they were singing and dancing in a victory parade. That upset Saul and started to pursue David. But he never met David. Even though God gave Saul into the hand of David, but David will not kill the anointed. Spirit of vengeance are destroyed in our life in Jesus' name. It's a lesson for us not to take vengeance. Following the death of Samuel, the Philistines gather a huge battle against the Israelites. King Saul desperately consulted the medium and told her to raise Samuel's spirit from the dead. Whether a demon disguised as somewhere or somewhere spirit sent by God, we don't know. But it was occultic. It was occultic power. And God was not very happy with Saul and he committed suicide. I pray that you will, you, we will not allow any foreign God into our life in Jesus' name. I, within a few minutes, I quickly go through the last of Eden. Rocket prayer and power for service in United Church. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Let's read quickly. 
the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47 quickly, so that I can summarize. And they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Prayer is the master key. The prayer was, the, was what made the early church to sporadically grow. They started in the upper room following the ascension of Jesus to heaven. He sent the comforter to death. And after death, sequel to, to Peter's famous sermon at Pentecost. There was a similar act of devotion to prayer. Brothers and sisters, we are losing a lot of things because we are so weak and tired and unable to pray. Prayer is the master key. The church grow in the Holy Church from about 100 to 3,000 due to prayer. The, 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 the disciples, they will not allow themselves to be distracted by the murmuring or, or uh, of the ministry or, or, or of the of the widow. They delegated some people to take care of the widow so that they would not be distracted from their specific ministry. Whatever is the distraction in our life, the Lord will destroy it in Jesus' name. The coming of the Holy Spirit in the Acts 2, uh, verse 3 is directly tied to the devoted prayer of the disciples. Peter and John pray, they lay their hand on Samarita and, and they receive the Holy Spirit. But we still find a social demise multitude who offer money. You cannot purchase the gift of, of God with money. Any, anything within our life that symbolizes idol, we destroy them today in Jesus' name. Brothers, sisters, are you now following Jesus afar off? Is that true that you cannot get on well with your neighbor? Is Christ still within your life? Are you taking vengeance? Are you remain holy and obedient? Are you still carrying the spirit of Saul? Are you still taking vengeance? Are you laboring and never laden for nothing? That Christ Jesus has made a way. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that, 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 lab, that, all ye that, that labor and are heavy laden, and I give you rest. Is it true that you have lost something, the fire of the Lord in your life? I'm fully persuaded, brother. I'm fully persuaded, sister, that our God is able to keep that which he has committed into our hands. Brethren and sisters and brothers, what shall we do now? Let all the sinners repent and confess their sin and repent totally and come back to the Lord with a penitent heart. Christ Jesus has the power to baptize us once again by the power of Holy Ghost. For the remission of the sin, today we shall receive the, gold, the gift of the Holy Ghost if we can pray. Let's, let's, let's now start to pray, my brothers and sisters. Let's commit our life into the hand of the Lord. 